have to move that out the way. So is the thumbnails out of the way now? So people can see the just the screen? Yeah. Okay. So I did a bit of, of hunting around um, last night on the uh, internet archive, uh, archive.org, um, called the Wayback Machine. And it's it's what, true what people say that... Um, <laughs> okay, Paul, is that your cat? <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, the Wayback Machine, it's, it's true what they say about the internet. Once it's on the internet, there's a good chance it's going to be there forever. And what you can see here is going back to um, probably late 1999, early 2000, which is when I first had a web presence. And I was using Homestead at that particular point in time. And I set up a, a series of, of uh, pages for uh, different parts of Australia, uh, for the mines and minerals of, of uh, you know, different parts. And this was the one that was the minerals of Tasmania. Now, it doesn't work anymore, but um, at least you can see what it what it looked like. OK, um, so uh, after a short while, Homestead decided that, and they were free at the time, they decided that you had to have a professional um, account with them to continue on. So I said, no, I don't really want to pay you money for something that's not that good. So I then looked at setting up my own uh, website using craigwhite.com as, um, as the domain name. And this is what 2000 craigwhite.com looked like. And uh, some of these actually linked back to Homestead until I could transfer them across, but it took a little bit of time to do. Um, all of this was done using uh, just coding directly in HTML, the, the, the code behind the, the web pages. Um, and when you get into something like that, uh, anything later on was going to be a lot easier. So if we just have a look at, um, you know, one of the pages, this is one of the pages it linked to. And then this one here was a, a, a deeper link as, as well. And when you look at the source code for that, this is what it looked like. And this is what you actually had to type in in order to create the, the web page. So fairly complex. Um, but fortunately, I, I uh, originally started my career in computing as a programmer, and I was what was called an assembler programmer. So that was an even lower level than, of code than, than HTML. So for me, it wasn't that difficult to do. But these days, it's much easier uh, using WordPress. Um, there are other uh, options around where you can still get free sites and, and you have web page builders where it's drag and drop. Um, but most of those come with, they usually, usually uh, either cheap or uh, don't cost much at all, or they, uh, they can be free but you get what you pay for. So um, the perform performance is not that great. Uh, the, um, the, the, the amount of flexibility you have is, is fairly limited. And I had a look last night also at uh, WordPress itself. So you can get yourself a free WordPress site um, without a, a specific dom domain name. And it, it's not, bad but it's a little bit complex and it doesn't work on this particular browser which is a microsoft edge uh, it would only work on chrome so that was a bit of a, a problem uh, in itself but uh, at least it is an option that, that you can actually use i have gone a different direction i have my own uh, virtual server <clears throat> and i actually use uh, in motion hosting uh, based in the states um, and I, I have all of my websites on the one virtual server, which means that any performance issues I cause myself, um, which I generally don't. And I've got plenty of, of capacity there uh, to have lots of photos, lots of web pages, um, you name it, you, know, you, can, you can do it. And I also host a couple of other sites. So the British Micromat Society, for instance, 
I host their site. Um, Paul Vandenberg, and although he hasn't gone very far on his, has one similar to, to this, the Pebble collection as well, for him to use for his collection, uh, as does uh, Peter Hall from CK Minerals and James Melville in uh, Tasmania. So um, they, each of those uh, people pay me just a small amount of money, which helps me to fund the, um, uh, the server, uh, which isn't cheap, but it's it's worth it. I was using bluehost.com um, a, a couple of years ago who provide a similar service, but theirs was cheaper and the performance was pretty poor. Uh, I was sharing a virtual server with X number of other people and it only needed one of those to have a, a really heavy hitting website and they took all the bandwidth and you, you ended up with uh, not even be able to load pages, which was was not good. So anyway, what I'm going to do today is is take you through some of the basics around setting up a, a web page similar to this. Um, the, there's a couple of, of things that uh, you don't necessarily have to do. So uh, I've got myself a, a URL here, a domain name, pebblecollection.com. Um, I have a, a few other domains as well. I have um, Sorel Publications, which is where I put the um, the monthly mineral chronicles through and, and things like that. I have crocoite.com. I've retained that for 20, gosh, 22 years now. I have croco art for my artwork uh, and a couple of others as well. But this one here is the one that I use for my collection. Um, WordPress is a, a fairly well used uh, utility. It's something that is developed or, or parts of it are developed by people all around the world. There is lots of free stuff available. Um, of what you see today, I only pay for one, and it was a one-off payment. I pay for one particular thing called a plugin, which <clears throat> I'll go through in a minute, but the, the rest of it is, is freely available. So uh, this particular look and feel is very easy to set up. Now, I'll just quickly go through. This is my home page, and I have it set up. You have, you can, there's two ways you can set it up. One is as a fixed page where you then have links. And if you look back at that, for instance, that was a fixed page, essentially. And then you have what's called uh, blog posts. And so each one of these entries here is, in effect, a blog, a, a blog post. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we have the, the blogs, the blog posts themselves appear in this area here, and you can scroll through. Uh, on the top here, we have um, mostly pages as opposed to posts, and the pages are things that are more static. So, uh, for instance, I've got a, an, uh, an index here, which if I click on the mineral index, then here uh, I can click on any one of those and go to the, the pages that, that contain that particular species. Um, same with locations. Um, there's a couple of special ones here. So mineral maps is the one that I do pay for or did pay for. And what this one allows me to do is to set up these maps. So uh, Mark, Sarah, you'd be familiar with my quest for American species or minerals. So where you see a blue square, they're ones that I have a, at least a specimen from that particular state. Where you see yellow ones, I don't. So I don't have anything from Mississippi, South Carolina, South, uh, North Dakota, or Delaware. Um, and I've got that for obviously different areas uh, as well. So same thing all the way through there. Um, I also, as some of you know, have a, an elements sub collection. And in my elements page here, I have a periodic table. And so any elements where I've got in my collection that I've already catalogued and are online, then you will see them uh, with a link here. So if I click on, uh, let's say I click on boron, for instance, as an example, that will bring up my boron specimen that I've got catalogued. So Steve, is that connected to your catalog? So if you add a new mineral, will it automatically show up here? Absolutely. Oh, it, yes and no. Um, in here, so if I've got, for instance, uh, I don't know, lanthanum, I have 
a specimen of um, elemental lanthium, which I will link directly to that. So down here, I've got elements in progress and you've got LA as one of them. There's, there's only a few elements that are, I don't have that uh, are available. Now, for the most part, all of these will only link to one particular post, which is the actual element. So um, if I've got uh, a mineral with uh, lanthanum in it or mir mineral with beryllium in it, like beryl, you won't get that when you click on here because this is what this is designed to be a subset. The only ones here that give you more than that are carbon, because I've got diamond and graphite as, uh, as elements, and uh, sulfur, uh, okay. because I've got native sulfur uh, specimens as well. So um, I don't think I've got them with gold. I think gold just says, show me everything that's uh, got the, uh, that is the element gold. So um, uh, if I click on gold, that will give me a number of specimens because they're all native elements. So you can see there that anything that actually has gold on it. Um, also have a, an option, a random post, which you just click on that and it says, here's a random post. Click on it again, you get a different one. And there's, I don't know, 14,000 that it can choose from. And then we have the admin link, which we'll go into in a minute, which will take me into the back of it. I'll just go back to here for a sec. So down the right hand side, uh, things called widgets. And this is a search, it's just a text search through the whole of the effectively the database. In here, it's called a, a tag cloud. And this is the top, I don't know how many that is, whatever the top number of, of species is. So I've got more quartz specimens than anything else in my collection. Although that is anything with quartz listed as one of the species on a particular mineral. Um, I also have a locality, excuse me, drop down uh, where you can just select from a particular uh, locality and it has a count of the tags, uh, the um, number of people, number of um, uh, items that are from Austria, for instance, is 89. So if I click on that, we'll get 89 Austrian specimens. You can see a lot of those don't have photos as well obviously with a number of, uh, of things in my collection. And then down the bottom is an archives one. So you just say, you know, if you want to look at a particular month or year or whatever, month and year, I should say. But we'll go into the admin. And I'll talk about a few different areas first. So it drops you into a dashboard, which I tend not to use that much anyway, other than the fact I'm, I'm a bit behind on updating uh, a few things something I need to get to at some particular point. But you have the posts that we saw are in here. So if I click on posts, I then get a, a list of posts and I can search for a particular one. So I don't know, let's pick um, Austria again as an example. And it will come up with all of the ones that are in Austria. Now, this is doing a text search, whereas the, the one before was actually looking at um, categories, which we'll come to in a minute. You can see here I've got Austria and Europe as the, the categories there. So that's, that's posts. And then we have pages. And in the pages, we have the about page. We have an elements page, location index, mineral index, and so on. So if we look at, um, uh, which one would be a good one to actually look at? Probably the about page, I suppose. I could cl click on that, I can, I can edit it or I can do other things with it. And this is just a bit of information about me with a few links and whatever. So I haven't updated that for a while. Um, further down, we have uh, the appearance. Now, the way that WordPress works is you have um, different themes that you can apply. So you apply a single theme to your web, web WordPress site, and that defines how what the look and feel of that is going to be like, which you can then tailor as well. So use customize. The reason that you have um, something like this, which is not actually active, it's a standard WordPress one. If I had particular problems where something was broken with the one that I'm using, which is Gridzone, 
um, I can revert back to a standard WordPress one to see if that fixes the problem. And therefore it might be a problem with the, the um, uh, thing that I'm using or whether it's a, a deeper problem that needs to be looked at. Um, when you go into customize, you can tell it where you want the menu to be. You can tell it whether you want a, a home page or a blog style, you can, you, you can change the colors. Um, you might notice with mine, I'll just open that up into a, a new tab. Um, I'm using dark mode on this one. So you have options like that as well. Um, and then within the, uh, the customization, you can also add widgets. So at the moment, we saw on the right hand side, um, these widgets that, uh, that I've set up, but there's a whole load of other things here that I could actually use if I wanted to. I could have a specific image displayed or um, I can have sliders. Um, I can put in text, links, I can have my recent posts, uh, a whole load of different things that you can actually do. Um, the menus, uh, well, at the moment you saw across the top, that's the menu that I'm actually using. So the menus option just allows you to, to tailor that. Um, and we won't worry about the other ones. So then the other important area in WordPress is plugins. And what plugins do, it's really the bits of logic that you, you add to the, uh, the website. So in here, for instance, I have um, some that are to me critical now on every one of my sites. And that is um, really simple SSL, which gives me the security up in the, the address line here, the HTTPS rather than just a HTTP. Um, so that's one that, that uh, is in every one of mine. I also put in the two top. So on here, if we scroll down, you see down the bottom right hand corner, a little arrow, that'll just take me right up to the top again. On no matter what page that I'm actually on. Um, and of the others, there's your random post. <coughs> uh, private content is a good one. So if I've got specimens where I don't want the general public, because mine's a public facing website, if I don't want the public to see a particular bit of information, then I use this plugin to essentially hide it to anybody that is not logged on. Now, the only person that can log on is me. So um, you can hide whole posts. You don't need this particular plugin to do that. But if you want to hide a particular area, then you use something like that. The um, mineral index up here, if you can see how we've got the numbers alongside, if I had a new uh, Adamite to catalog. Uh, sorry, if I had a new species that's not on the, this list to catalog, uh, I don't have to come into this page and, and add it because this particular um, plugin adds it automatically for me. And um, it, it just gives you, it's, it's a much easier way of, of generating a page like this. So I'll just go into edit page on here just to, to show you. So all you've got is a thing called a short code. So that code, that short code there produces, uh, whoops, hold on, produces this page with all of these uh, items. And you can see here that there's a lot of work if you've got to do that manually. Um, the interactive world maps is the maps one that, that uh, we saw before. And um, this is only the, where you actually uh, add it to your system. Uh, the actual, um, where are we? Interactive maps, there we are. So you actually manage it in, in this area here. And what you do is you, you have each of your maps set up. They're set up in the background as a, a map. And if I wanted to go in and change something, so I've now got something from, uh, let's see, Ecuador that I didn't have before, then I just add the link in here 
to that category, which will bring up everything with Ecuador, and I change the color from this pale yellow, which is this code, to a pale blue, which is this code, and it will change on the on the screen here. So you can see Ecuador is currently pale yellow, and that's all I need to do to to add a new country or county or whatever I'm, I'm actually doing. Um, let's go back to the plugins for a second. If there's any questions, just stop me as well. Um, the draw attention one. You can ask you something. Yep. Um, you, if you use your interactive map, uh, you have to tag the post you do with the tag Ecuador, otherwise it won't see it, will it? Yeah, I'll, I'll show you how I do that in a minute, uh, right. Frank. I, I, I'm trying to stay a little bit higher at the moment, but <laughs> okay. I'm not doing a great job of it. Um, so I think... Yeah, I think I'll, I'll probably leave that at that for the moment. So... Um, you can have various users set up uh, and each of those can have different um, level of access. So here you can see I, I just originally was testing uh, different levels of, uh, of access, but then I didn't need to give anybody else access to it anyway, so it didn't matter. Um, and then there are various other things like uh, settings where you decide how you want even this structure to to look up here as an example so in um in reading that was not reading or be in general no it's basically the, the this is basic information about the um the site um Oops. You can say how you want to control comments on the site. Um, most of my sites don't have the ability to leave comments because you get spammed a lot. Uh, Permalinks is what I was looking for. So in here, for instance, I have a what's called a custom structure. So all of my pages are the domain name uh, followed by I click on that one as an example, followed by um, a particular structure. And you can simplify that uh, as much as you want. So for instance, if you only want simple posts, uh, you can have this one here, which click on that, whoops, if I click on that, uh, it'll just be P equals post equals whatever number for each individual one. That's how it finds them. All right, um, what I'll do is I'll go into, posts and you can also do it if I'm logged on I can do it from up here as well I can edit this post here um, or I can actually go into a particular one here and say edit or quick edit there's some fields that I can actually change without going right into full editor so for instance if I'd forgotten to actually put a category against it um, then I can actually just go in here and click on whichever one it is and same with tags. If I've missed a tag, I can just add it on to, to there. That will go through. So I'll do it on this one. Say edit post. So in the editor, we have the title. And um, so I'll just go back and make it easier. We'll look at it as well. If I go into edit here, we go into the same place. So this is the title, and that's that area there. And then you have a description and an image. And with this particular image, what I do with a lot of them is I actually have a link. So look there, it's actually a link to a Mindat photo. Um, the reason that I do that is twofold. One's one's uh, because Mindat handles high resolution photos a lot better than the WordPress does. So this is a smaller version of what's in Mindat. Um, but also it makes it more available, readily available to the, the whole world as well. Um, it, 
when I'm adding a new one, I have my catalog in Excel and I just do copy and paste. Copy the, the cell from Excel, paste it into here. Very, very straightforward. You can see there's nothing else to it. But when you look on here, you've got other things down the bottom. Now, these are another um, way you can customize where I say include any related pro posts. So uh, this one being Grossula predominantly, it says, well, here's another Grossula, here's another one. And in this particular instance, it's got uh, Lizardite. So it says, oh, you might want to look at a Lizardite as well. And then there's another Grossula here. So um, it's just another way of, of people being able to, to sort of go through and have a look at stuff, um, see what's available. Now, back over on this side, on the right-hand side here, we have some important things. This here is the what's called the URL slug, and that is this up the top here. That's what generates that particular uh, web page and how people access it. Um, down in the categories area, you can see here this, this is from uh, New South Wales. So I have it as a hierarchical structure, which is what categories are best used for. So I've got New South Wales clicked, Australia clicked, and Australasia for the region. And then when I look on here, that's where those ones show up in the actual post. And if we go into the mineral maps, uh, it also uses these same ones to, to select uh, items from there. Then down the, the next bit down, we have the tags. And I use the tags predominantly for the mineral species. So we've got chromite, crosshair, and lizardite. And I don't have to type these in either. I can just highlight that, copy it, and paste it into that box, and it will automatically um, um, save them. And then we have a featured image here, which is a link to the one that's stored for this. Oh, I've missed one particular bit in the main area. Well, I'll show you on here. So on this one, um, if I go into replace, doesn't want to do it for some reason. I don't know why that was way over that side, but there you go. Um, so you can upload another uh, image to replace this one, or we can go into the media library. It's something I didn't cover before. All of the photos and any other types of media uh, sit in um, this area called media. So you can see here, there's, there's lots and lots of stuff. And you can search the same way that you could uh, in other areas as well. So when, so if you wanted to change and you put the wrong one on and it should have been that one, you just click on that instead and then save and uh, select it. I'll leave it on that one, obviously. I'll just close it as is. Um, and then down here, that, that featured image uh, is linking to the same place that this one is. And the reason for that being there is when you go back to the main page, that's what shows here. So where we've got ones, uh, not really too many that I haven't done recently. Yep, I'll do it a different way. Sorry, probably giving people a headache here. Go back into that for a minute. If I go into this one as an example, this has no image. And if we have a look in the, Actually, it doesn't even have a description in this one because I haven't got around to it. But if we have a look here, it does it does have tags and it does have categories, but there's no featured image. That's why it doesn't show up there. Right, now that's the basics of um, the editing, once you've edited it, you'll then update it and the changes are made straight away. And then you go on to the next one. Now, something else I need to show you as well is there are additional things available such as this one. Some of you might've seen this type of thing in um, MinDat as well. You can actually add a photo in MinDat where you can get a, a slider. Uh, and in fact, in fact, you can on this one. So 
here we've got on the right hand side white light and long wave UV on that side and I can actually just pull that across either way and all that is in WordPress is another short code so depending on what values are put into uh, these areas you can see here we've got long wave UV and white UV that's the before and after so that's this side and this side it'll show you which is which is which and the image one is this side image two is this side and that's the number of each of the images in my media so if I go back into here and into media and we have a look at uh, 17916 17916. Ah, did I type it wrong? 17. No, maybe it doesn't do it that way. Okay, so I'll do fluorite. So it mustn't do it on that part of it. So I'll do fluorite. Hello? Um, and that is this one here, which is. It doesn't have the, the number in here, of course, it's just the, the tag up there. So it's not going to find it in a search, but that's that's one image. And then the other image is this one. And what it does is it uses both of those to provide you with uh, the, the um, facility of this thing called 2020. Now down here, this is just a screenshot because what I actually do with this one is because I can't have this as a clickable item. If I want to go through to Mindat, I've got to click on this one, which is just a, a screenshot as I said. And in Mindat, you've got the higher resolution version where you can do the same thing, which is pretty cool. Well, at least I think it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, what else? Any questions? Uh, one of the things I was going to um, comment on, um, you mentioned that you have large images as external links. Yeah. Uh, then you have an image that is the main image, and yep. then you have a little thumbnail image. So that's three images that you need to do uh, this one, two of which are on the site and one of which is external to the site. Uh, not quite true, Paul. You only need two because WordPress uh, handles these ones automatically so it creates right. it creates a series of different size images cool. um, for, for its own internal use so when you do a, a featured image it's still picking this same one so i only upload downsizing it. it okay yeah yeah um i'm not sure if you it doesn't actually show you on here there, there are some um some themes where it actually shows you the yeah the number of images that you've got in there but you only ever upload the one so what i have is basically a png file for mindat uh, which is much much larger and, and just would kill performance on here yeah. and then this one here which is only 1280 by 850 so it's fairly small and 217 kilobytes yeah whereas yeah, the main you've, ones yeah you've, you've i mean when you're cataloging as many specimens as you are you've got to be aware of your how much uh, disk space you're consuming because you have to pay for it. C correct. <laughs> um, yeah. And I think I'm consuming about 93% in total. Yeah. So um, it, it takes a long time to get from 93 to 100. Um, but this is certainly the largest website that I've got. <clears throat> By far, it's much larger than, um, you know, we've got progite.com on there, for instance. Same, you can see the same. Uh, theme of, has been used here. Uh, I've got Sorel Publications, which is a different theme. And again, here, this doesn't take up a lot of space because uh, any um, PDFs that I have are actually stored in Google, which I pay less for. Um, Croco Art is again a similar similar sort of thing. Um, I even have I have my Criticam. And you can see I've kept the same theme for, for a lot of those because uh, it, it's much 
easy for me to, to maintain that way. Um, not sure if there's anything else that I can actually go through that would be useful. Uh, I um, mentioned the other night that I'd found a new app that could be potentially useful for this sort of thing called yep. What Runs, yes. W-H-A-T-R-U-N-S. <clears throat> Um, and yeah, I'm trying it out and I can, it's actually, if I could share my screen, I will um, show you what it looks like. On uh, just, your just before you do, uh, just with the elements, if I've got a, a new element to link, I go into this area here, <coughs> excuse me. And what I do is I say, add another area. Um, I don't know, i say this one here. So what I actually do is just say, I want, you don't have to use this for periodic table. You can use it for lots of things. Um, it's just an image mapping tool. I try and get those as, as good as possible. I tell it what the title is. So in this case, it's whatever that particular element is, which is not one that you can get anyway. And then what do, what do I want to do with it? And Spice. I'd say, I want to go to URL and I'd stick the URL into, into here and then save it. And that's all I need to do to, to uh, link another one. So it's quite straightforward. All right, I'll stop sharing. I hope I haven't confused too many people. Helps if I unmute myself. Can people see my desktop? With the on up the sorry the the pebble collection site on yeah who was me trying to close the window yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right so I found this plugin so if you've ever wondered what what Steve uses then this little app will tell you exactly what Steve uses uh -huh. mm, it's very nice um so if you've ever wondered what Flickr uses for example it can do the same thing it will tell you exactly what it uses so it's uh, gallery is using a thing called Lightbox, and then you can say, let's go to the Lightbox website. There we go. Uh -huh. I found that very useful in the last couple of days. Um, but it only runs on Chrome. No, it, it, that's on Firefox. Awesome. It, it's got plugins for Chrome and for Firefox. I'm not sure about Edge. Right. But but I had a look at it last night and it, it said Chrome. Uh, oh, okay. Edge, but Excuse me. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Oh, now um, have... while I went, while we were while I was listening, I went to try and find the micro amount, uh, the Canadian Micro uh, Mineral Association Zoom link, and I could not find it. They, um, they send it out um, directly. They don't. Right. They don't um, publish it. If you go to the website, you can um, uh, make yourself uh, known that you want to yes. be on the on their. Yeah, so and they they will then send it to you. Yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. Just wanted to make sure people were clear that the link I sent oh, is really like the whole thing. I really like your website, but I don't want to do it with posts. I want to do it like Hank does it with uh, all kinds of uh, minerals A to Z and minerals by location. Yes. So and you. Don't have to do it at post. I know why you do it. It's 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 cool, but I don't want to do it. I want it by name and uh, uh, letterings. Yep. And it takes a bit more work, though. It does. It does. Yeah. It's it's more like the style that that uh, I originally started with. Um, yeah. And it, it is a lot of work to maintain. Uh, whereas with the post style, um, you, you can add new entries very very yeah. quickly. Uh, the, the thing that takes the most time uh, is the photography, <laughs> funnily enough. Yeah. <laughs> I've been interested for quite a while about how different collectors manage their collections and keep track of their, their catalogs. And uh, it seems like everybody's doing it in a different way and with a different philosophy. Um, I've created my own, and because I'm a programmer, I use PHP and SQL. And, and it's 
it's it's grown way beyond what is rational to try and share. But uh, I I'm kind of fascinated with your your idea because it's so uh, it's so it's almost simplistic in that you don't have to do any any actual linking of uh, things. There's no no uh, cross linking or cross tabulating all, or anything like that. It's all done by searching. Yeah, it's all hierarchical, so it's it's good. Yeah. 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 The, pow the power of tags and metadata. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's pretty interesting. And um, and I at first I was kind of confused that this was your your main catalog, and I was worried that well, what happens when? It's not. <laughs> so, <laughs> it, but it's not. You said you had your Excel yeah. uh, backup, but that sounds like it's even more work to maintain. Um, or do you just have a line for? Per item just, and not worry about it. It's just a line per item. So um, okay. I mean, Excel's pretty good at being able to to filter and search anyway. Yeah. Um, and I have one column which says, "Is it online?" So is okay. it in the Pebble collection? And uh, right. the vast majority are, but but not all of them. So mm. um, yeah, I've got a I've got a pile that are sitting over on the side here that I I started putting into boxes about a week ago and I haven't got around to actually doing anything with them other than I've put a label on them. So they're going to have to go in. But um, one of the things I try and do, because it's a public facing website, is I try and have the first ones that you see as having photographs. So if uh, if I add a whole load of new stuff and I haven't, haven't photographed any, you'll end up with, a, well, actually that, so if I can just go back for a sec, I'll show you. You have some pretty funny uh, remarks on that. Yeah, so that's a, that's actually another plugin. Uh, oops, let me see that one. So if we go back into where are we to here, and if I click on that one again, because I know there's some in there. So where you see these, the, it's selecting randomly selecting one of four messages to say there's no photo. Um, <laughs> okay. Got it, but it's a plugin that actually does that. So. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for me, it's easy, you know, if I if I haven't actually taken the photo, I know I'm going to have something there rather than just text. <clears throat> and it's not just a, uh, you know, a stock photo that you, you could stick in. Um, but if I have something that's been catalogued for a while and I don't have a photograph for it and then I do photo it, then what I actually do, I'm sorry, I'll just go back in again. Um, what I actually do there is I go into quick edit on the particular one and I change the, the date and time through here. Oh. <laughs> um, so what that does is it makes it more current and it's almost like I've yeah. just created a new, sure. a new and that, that puts it right at the top of the page. Mm -hmm. uh, it's good from that perspective. So how, how do you think about this project? Do you think about it as your catalog or do you think about it as a, a public uh, display of your collection? Uh, it, it's a bit of both. So, um, for instance, if I'm away from home, I don't have access mm -hmm. to the Excel spreadsheet. So right. it then becomes my catalogue to a to a degree. Obviously, not being totally complete means you don't have access to everything you need. But if I uh, come across at a show, come across a, a species from a particular locality that I may or may not have, Montcentelier is an example, um, then I can at least look in there and say, do I have one? And what I try and do, so I'll get back in one more time. <clears throat> um, one thing where I do have a bit of fixed coding is in the mineral index. Mm. In here, you've got, this is the one that's generated automatically, the tag cloud, but down the bottom, uh, way, way, way down here. Um, I also have species oh. list, and these ones here are ones that I know that I have a specimen of, regardless of whether or not it's it's on the Pebble collection or not. Um, and obviously I've got to keep this up to date and uh, mm -hmm. started off being the only way that I had of, of checking. Um, but it's, it's, it does make a difference. Um, but I don't actually have to come to this page to do it. All I need to do is say in here something like, uh, I know this one's now in there, but 
it wasn't in there the other day. Mm -hmm. If I say rowite, there's my rowite. But if it wasn't there, and it, and this is where it should come up, it should have another one. But I haven't updated this particular page. So if I go into edit, I might just do it on the fly now because I've been a bit slack. So if I now go, oops, wrong one, that one, down to the minerals beginning is R. In here, you don't actually have rowite. So what I need to do is I need to go in to here and put in and uh, oh, where are we? There. It's not, not a character that I use that much. And I update it and go back to the view page. Oh, and actually, I'll go back to here. So if I now put in rowite, I will now get two. So mm -hmm. if I hadn't catalog, cataloged that one a couple of days ago, but I had actually put it into that list down the bottom, then it would have at least come up with this. So I can say yeah. there, I know it's in my Excel spreadsheet, if I've done the right thing. I know it's in the Excel spreadsheet, but I haven't got it on the, the, um, the website, but I know I have a specimen. So do I need to buy this one? Yes or no? That's essentially the way I try and work. Yeah. I use my my online version for the same thing. I, and yep. mine, but my online uh, database is my database. It's 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 all stored in SQL, and yep. and so I have to back it up, and I have to have a plan for what happens when what almost happened last year happens. <laughs> so, yeah. well, with with yeah. the online one, with all of my um, all of my websites, I have a um, an option that I took up with Emotion Hosting, where they do a, a snapshot of the whole virtual server mm -hmm. three times a week. So, um, oh, nice. yeah. yeah. If, if I then go through and do uh, updates and I totally kill one of the, the websites, which I've done a couple of times, um, then I can get it back. And it's easier than doing separate web uh, backups for each website. It's a good question. With your host Oh, sorry. Uh, this this might be a little too technical for the for the discussion. Let me know if it is. But with your hosting, uh, do they allow pure PHP sites, or does it have to be WordPress? No, no. You can have whatever you want. It's a all they're providing is a, a virtual server. There is an option available to create a WordPress site, but you don't have to. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I, for me, I'm currently easy. using GoDaddy, and I'm I'm having a lot of issues. With, well, they would, with they that. would be they'd be very similar to Bluehost yeah. in terms of the the um, the options you get, unless you're paying a, a premium price. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I bought a I bought a, word, I, a Bluehost plan some time back, and I have yet to figure out how to do anything other than <laughs> WordPress on it, and, and it's a little frustrating. <laughs> Yeah. Um, one of the I may not I, let, let it go on. Yeah, I, I use um, Namecheap, but they're all fairly similar. I've used several over the years, including GoDaddy. Um, but they all seem to have multiple options um, in terms of what type of hosting you have. Sometimes you can get a bare machine. Sometimes it's a virtual machine. Sometimes it's a managed host. So if it's a managed host, they will run WordPress for you. You will not get access to the back end. You'll just get access to the uh, WordPress. Okay. Well, right maybe there. I made a mistake when I when I signed up. I'm not it's, sure. It it took me a little while to work out what the difference between the various options were, mm -hmm. yeah, because so there's my, a price difference as well too. So it's yeah yeah. yeah but mine's a virtual uh, a managed virtual uh, server, but mm -hmm. I've got full control full control over every aspect of it. Should I wish to do so, I don't want to get into the, the the rear end of that thing um so if if there's a particular issue and it, it supports a big thing for me bluehost support was shocking um in motion ho hosting is so really it's good at least yeah in good at is just a, a abysmal yeah. yeah so um uh, for instance i had uh, i have an auto renew of the 
um, the certificates on the site and twice something's gone a bit awry and it hasn't automatically updated. So all of a sudden you've got a, a, an unsecure site and certain browsers mm -hmm. won't allow people in. And for me, it was just a log a call on the chat. You're talking with a directly with a support analyst mm -hmm. and they fix it very quickly and, and you move on. And for me, that's important. So yeah. Can you share the information on the on the host? Yep. In the chat. Uh, I'll, I'll bring it up. Um, so on that, that question you asked originally, Bruce, on yeah. um, uh, is it a front end or is it the catalog itself? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm actually really interested in finding a plugin that allows me to have my uh, yeah. catalog as the feed in information to the, the each of the posts. I haven't found it's, one yet. It probably doesn't exist. I think part of the problem is that everybody considers a different set of of data to be essential to their catalog. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a, a joke about that I'll find in post. I think it'd be really interesting to find find something that would allow you to use Mindat as the back end for the minerals and localities for your your mm -hmm. your own catalog, but that wouldn't rely on their storage for your catalog information. Uh, it's also got to have Mindat being available, which <laughs> it's been well, exciting. exactly. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, that's a problem. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, so you're in motion. Yeah, in motion hosting. So uh, in motion and um, you can see here, there's, there's a, a lot of options. So in the CPAL, mm -hmm. for right. instance, you've got a hell of a lot of stuff yeah. in there that you can do. Yeah. Um, down the bottom here, I've got uh, WordPress Manager, but that's I only use that when I set up a new site, so I don't need yeah. to use it very much. All my emails go through here as well. You can do your own PHP stuff. Yeah, um, you've got FTP, right. the whole lot. So it's really, Great. really quite good. But as you can see here, um, I'm yeah fairly close. Uh, so I've got even on my backup. Yeah, Fifty gigabytes. That's not much. <laughs> so no. <laughs> but for, for me it's uh, it's a fair bit um it, yeah it's it's something that uh has been a bit of a trial and error over the years mm -hmm. and um yeah i thought blue blue most uh, blue host was good initially um based on some of the the uh the reviews that i'd seen but no mm -hmm. and their support they used they used to have good good reviews but Gone down. I haven't haven't been satisfied. No. So. All right. Thanks. Uh, any other questions? Did I confuse everybody? I have one little comment. This yep. is silly, but um, you mentioned at the very beginning of the Internet Archive. Yes. And um, so this winter, we spent a uh, got an Airbnb in San Francisco. My daughter had some surgery there, and so we had it for a month. And the Internet Archive was literally two doors away from us. <laughs> um, it, it is in an old Christian science uh, church, temple, whatever it is, but it's a very large building. It looks like a, uh, like it's got Greek columns on it. And, and, and all that. you couldn't go in because of COVID. It yeah. would have been interesting, but it was kind of cool because you're, you're just uh, two doors down from, I don't know how many servers they got in there. Uh, or, you know, why they have it that looks like that. <laughs> You know, it's got a prime real estate in San Francisco, but <laughs> well, it was it was actually quite interesting because um, uh, a couple of days ago, uh, I've been working on the latest issue of the magazine, and there was a bit of information that I had in an old old web page going back to around about the two thousand and three two thousand and five era, um, and it was buried on my uh, computer. And there was a bit of information there that, that was quite useful for what I needed. And it had a couple of links in the web page. And of course, both links were broken because they were so old. And so I copied the link and stuck it into the Wayback machine and I got the, the pages that I was after. I was able to <laughs> get that information back. So it's good. It's very useful. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? So we've lost Martin. Oh, no, really confused. Just, no, just, just confused, that's all. <laughs> no, I have, I have a lot of work to do. I just started last week with my webpage, so 
Yeah, you're doing okay, actually, Frank. Uh, I've got a website, but I'm about to bin it, so I'm I'm homestead, and it's that's I've done nothing on it at all for for years. But I, I I was running the BMS thing on it. I run our local club. I just got to try and figure a way of moving all the stuff off the local club on on a Facebook page. And do it that way. I don't. Yeah. I, I, I ain't got time to sit down and do a web page. Mm. Just too busy doing other things. I have a URL, but never did anything with it. Apparently, there is a top level domain that's dot rocks. I'm yes. sure it was meant for bands, but yeah, yeah. I've got I, mean, a, I have Doug's dot rocks. So. Yeah, I've got unboxed dot rocks. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I, I was looking. I think it. Uh, dots on rocks. Yeah, that's the one got, <laughs> I think you yep. set up on, on my yep. server. Yeah, that, that's a great top level domain. <laughs> yeah, I've got a couple of domains, but um, it, it, they proliferate. Yeah, it's, it's another well, hobby. I, the the, fir the first one I did was uh, I was well, when I first started to do this, was, I, I, was, I was asked to, to choose a pick a domain. So I was scratching around and I looked across at my 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 microscope and I said Leica. So I thought, ah, Leica Minerals. So that's what I got LeicaMinerals.com. That's not bad. That's probably worth some was, money now. I was hedging my bets on that one just in case, you see. So yeah. So there's lots of um hosting uh, so, uh solutions out there. Um hmm. The pricing seems to be very much within a range for any given service, um, yeah. but it's been pointed out, do a little bit of research, see how other people have found using um, the service, because the thing that really matters is the support you get. Absolutely. Yeah. My, 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 my friend has tried to put a, site, a website together, using WordSpace, but he, he went through HostGator. And HostGator is just totally con confused. I just can't figure out how it works at all. And uh, the more control you have, I think he's binned HostGator now. He's trying to do another different one. We still aren't getting nowhere with it. It's just, it just seems too too complicated to get anything onto the ready thing. I have but, a site that's on Amazon, and it was moved from another you know server that hosted it for a long time. And it's all very intimidating. <laughs> I mean, I think you do everything, but I just end up using Dreamweaver to go in there and adjust it like I always used to and, mm -hmm. and ignore everything else because it's too easy to screw it all up. But, yeah, the, the, the secret to not being intimidated by complicated websites is to know that you can never know anything and be in a permanent state of confusion and just get used well, to yeah. it. That's the norm, that is for me. It is. Well, that's what <laughs> WordPress is really good for for most people because oh, it's yeah, pretty easy. It allows you to to do web page uh, creation without knowing anything at all. Yeah. And the more you learn, the more you can do. But yeah. uh, but it allows that that entry. So how how far can you get on 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 um, on that one without actually using any other? Can you actually build a website on that? Or have you got someone to do the hosting for you? So the, you, can do, you can do a you, free you WordPress can, site on wordpress.com. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. It, it, okay. is, it is a little, it's a little bit confusing um, because they're trying to continually push you through the, the paid version, which is like 20 bucks a month, I think. Um, and so you've got to try and because I had a look at this last night, you've got to try and find the the right links to click to get past that. Um, All right. And and it was probably more complex because I was trying to initially do it on on Edge, and it doesn't seem to support Edge. I mean, he's been paying twenty five quid a month now for three years, and we still got nowhere. So, uh, too yeah. much. Not much fun. No, no. No. I mean, you can stand up a machine in your house, open up your internet and set your domain to your local IP and, and run it yourself. Right. Um, but that's the opposite of simple. Yeah. I can't recommend <laughs> that. I've been there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is I, I had a I had a, 
a Linux machine set up to do that for a while for some nonprofits that I worked with. <clears throat> oh, I think I'll just I say got, I got one one guys. update behind, and some hacker got in there and was using it as a bridge to to hack NASA, and I got a real, real upset call from my host. Yes, um, most hosts um take security very seriously for that very reason um and the better hosts will actually shut you down to protect other people which is good to know yep. it's inconvenient for you but because i mean the first thing you're going to know about it you're not going to know if you've been hacked the first thing you're going to know is when you get that angry phone call mm -hmm. yeah. And I mean, let's face it, WordPress is relatively secure, but it's very, very popular. So it's a very, very well thought, uh, well attacked target. And anytime yeah. there's a vulnerability, it, they spread like wildfire. So it's very important to keep up to date. Yeah, that, my WordPress sites were were a big target on GoDaddy when I when I was using it for them, and because they wouldn't update the version yeah. of WordPress, they would just yeah. let it language and they wouldn't let you update the PHP. So there's all these, these vulnerabilities. And it was, so and PH, uh, PHP, is, <laughs> PHP has the advantage of not being very young, it's very mature, but it has right. the disadvantage of being very old and having lots of vulnerabilities yeah. that have accumulated mm -hmm. over the years. So yeah, well, it's, just, and especially an old version. Yeah, so. exactly. You saw uh, in, on my dashboard that um, there's a few updates that I haven't done. Uh, one yes. of those will be to the latest version of, of WordPress, but you, you do it on a risk basis because there could be a new version come out two, two or three times a month, even if it's uh, if they just tweak bits and it's a sub version. So you do it when you think you really need to do it. Don't and really I mean, in this, this space with personal web pages, nobody's nobody's relying on this service no. update early update often if it breaks because of an update just roll it back if you haven't got yeah. your back um uh, it, it'll and teach you how to do backups backup is, is very uh, it's a yeah. very sensible to do <laughs> it's the single best thing you can do for yourself yeah or your future you anyway well there's, there's quite a lot of plugins that um i've got set to auto update as well because i know that they're not going to do any damage so like the uh, the ssl one um yeah. Uh, I've got one that I use called disable comments so that people can't actually spam me uh, on various sites. Um, not of every site because some sites you need to have the ability for people to interact, but where it doesn't need to be done, then disable comments stops all of that. Um, and those are just very tiny little bits of code anyway. The likelihood that they're going to break the, the system is, is pretty low. So I guess the other thing to be aware of with WordPress is it, it has its roots in uh, web blogging, in blogging. So everything you see on WordPress is focused on blog posts and continuously updating uh, posts. But the fact that people use it for e-commerce in ways that it was never designed to be used is a freaking miracle. It's yep. really done very well for itself. And it, to manage to keep that um blogging um focus as its core while having that capacity is just amazing i think it's interesting how you've twisted that that paradigm into into something that works as your your catalog steve i think that that is a use that they probably did not have in mind when they created wordpress but it's it works very well it looks like it's working very well for that so it is it's good yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pretty happy with uh, where, where it got to. So I don't tend to play around with it much other than just add information. <clears throat> um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's good fun. It doesn't take up a lot of my time, which is the other important thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, um, if there's no other questions or comments, then we might finish up for today and see you back in two weeks time with Martin. Awesome. Yep. Who has gone this? Oh, there he is. You keep yeah. hiding, Martin. I'm still there. Still there. Uh, right. you, you try to get rid of him or something. Jeez. No, no, no. I would do that. I've been in the same place all night. I haven't moved around. Some 
Others have moved around, but I'm in pretty static where I am there, so that's all right. I must have a blind spot just in that one part. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's the, um, that's right. these lights. Well, it's great seeing you all again. Yeah. Yeah, same here, please. Thanks, yeah, Steve. Thank you. Take care. Yeah. See you in a couple Good of weeks. Thank you. Yeah. Bye.